Kia ora koutou katoa. Welcome to the All Report Animal Rights News for Aotearoa. In today's top stories, scientists potty train cows for the dairy industry, the terrible conditions at a colony cage egg producer are exposed once again, and the EU passes a resolution to phase out animal testing. Before we start, Nā māua te mihi kia koutou. We've really enjoyed making this series so far and appreciate all the support we've received. If you'd like to help grow this kaupapa, support us by subscribing on YouTube, like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and help keep us fed by supporting us on Kofi.com. Tēnā koutou anō. Thanks again. Now, a warning. This video contains images and themes of animal cruelty. To help our viewers, stories containing disturbing content will include this message and sound. Now for our first story, a joint project by a German institute and the University of Auckland has shown that calves can be potty trained. The aim of the research, which was conducted in indoor labs in Germany, was to capture the cow's nitrogen-rich urine, which, in the high concentrations we've created through modern agriculture, has a disastrous environmental impact. Regarding their ability to be toilet trained, one Kiwi researcher said, the cows are at least as good as children aged two to four years. They also added that cattle, like many other animals or farm animals, are quite clever and they can learn a lot. This desperate attempt to prolong the dairy industry has proven that months old calves are as intelligent or capable as young children up to the age of four. And though we don't think intelligence has anything to do with how we should treat others, it's good to see the industry admit that cows are not these intellectually inferior, lifeless milk machines. Of course, such silver bullet approaches will not solve the environmental issues of this industry. The researchers said themselves it would be significant if they could collect 10 to 20 percent of urinations. Avoiding how difficult this would be to implement at scale, it still leaves out the majority of cow's waste, methane emissions, nitrate fertilizers, coal burners, topsoil damage, and so on and so on. With research like this becoming more common, it's clear the industry is well aware that the status quo is no longer acceptable. The cruelty of colony cage farms has been exposed again. In 2019, NewsHub released exclusive farm watch footage inside Northern Eggs, a colony cage egg producer in Whangare. The company said at the time that this activist footage was not representative of their operations, while refusing to allow media to look inside their sheds. Following on from the expose, MPI launched an investigation into the farm and found no breach. In May this year, a former worker shared more documentation of the colony farm. Speaking to Animal Matters, the whistleblower said that animal suffering appeared to be part and parcel of the industry. Did you ever witness animal abuse at the Northern Eggs farm? Without a doubt. And it was reported, every time it was witnessed, it was reported to the manager. And it was just a matter of, oh well. Most of the time the cruelty happened, it was normally during a, a cull where they were killing off the birds at the end of the flock, at the end of their laying cycle. And it was pretty much, well, the birds are going to die anyway, so who cares if they suffer a bit beforehand. The attitude of the manager was pretty much out of sight, out of mind. It was not uncommon to find birds with broken legs, broken wings, um, infected wings and legs that have been broken, and the bones, like, obviously, you break a bone, it's going to get infected. Following this new release, MPI again found no evidence of breaches of the Animal Welfare Act. MPI previously said the footage of two dead birds is not something anybody wants to see, but MPI is cognizant this farm can be responsible for the care of up to 175,000 birds at a time. It's clear that to MPI, the more animals in your care, the lower the expectation to maintain animal welfare. The egg producer similarly said, whilst it is confronting to see images of any dead animal, mortality does occur in livestock operations. If you haven't yet, please sign SAFE's petition to ban colony cages in Aotearoa. And the MPI failures don't end there. Catriona Cole has killed 55 deer and two horses by failing to provide them with food and water. MPI was notified about the condition of the animals by a kind-hearted member of the public back in 2020. As a result, inspectors made repeated visits to the property. In one visit, MPI found two dead horses in a locked yard with no feed or water, as well as 160 starving deer. Despite this, MPI left the animals under the woman's care, satisfied merely with serving her some notices. 
In another visit, they had to release 45 deer from a holding paddock where they had no access to food or water. They found another six dead deer in the same paddock. Still, animals were left to suffer with the abusive caregiver. MPI's decision to leave the animals under this person's care is a clear show of their disregard for animal life. MPI has a history of failing to hold abusers accountable and leaving animals in dangerous situations that predictably lead to further deaths. Even the judge thought MPI was giving this animal abuser too much leeway and postponed sentencing until December so that MPI can consider a further ill treatment charge related to 120 more deer. Unfortunately, MPI relies on public complaints of animal abuse, so call them on 0800 00 to report welfare breaches. And please, if you haven't already, sign the petition for an independent commissioner for animals. We'll leave a link in the description below. Some high-profile celebs have co-signed a letter to the president of the upcoming UN conference on climate change. The letter, coordinated by the Humane Society, urged Mr. Alok Sharma to formally and publicly recognize the role of animal agriculture as one of the largest contributors of climate change, and to reflect that in the upcoming conference agenda. Aimed at uniting the world to tackle climate change, the conference is ironically headed by the UK, one of the most environmentally destructive forces in the world. World. Though animal agriculture is the second highest emitter of greenhouse gases and is responsible for more deforestation and sequestration loss than any other sector, it's not specifically mentioned in the conference document. Instead, it is lumped under vague messages such as more sustainable, nature positive and resilient agriculture. Beef is equated with soy and palm oil production, despite beef creating seven times the emissions as palm oil and 20 times the emissions as tofu, which is a very concentrated form of soy. Interestingly, transport gets a full day at the conference, despite the fact that animal agriculture creates even more emissions. Hmm. The letter signed by the likes of Billie Eilish, Stephen Fry, Ricky Gervais and Moby asks the UN to endorse financial investment in the transitioning to plant-based agriculture. James Shaw recently made headlines for deciding to fly to this conference. Here's hoping something meaningful comes of it. The Lake Waituna Control Association, weird name, has dug a channel opening the Waituna Lagoon up to the sea for the third year in a row. This is done in order to prevent flooding of the surrounding farmland a hassle to farmers in the area who have complained about losing animals to these floods. Maybe don't put animals where you know they're going to drown, just saying. This channel was built despite concerns being raised by the Awarua Runanga, the Department of Conservation and Southland Fish and Game, regarding the severe ecological damage this causes to the ecosystem. Rachel Kelly writes, the lagoon holds a delicate ecosystem filled with unique marine and bird life, and that the lagoon failed five out of six ecological targets in the summer of 2019 to 2020 because it was over open to the sea during spring, which is an important time for rupia growth, a plant vital for the biodiversity of the ecosystem. Lake Waituna Control Chairman Ewan Perry said, in response, I believe they, Fish and Game, Department of Conservation and Iwi, are exaggerating the effects. It should be noted that Ewan Perry's family have been farming in the Waituna area since 1861. And just like that, all of the concerns of these groups were swept aside for industry interests. Here's a radical solution. Move the animals off these farms that are dangerously close to lagoons, rewild the habitat to a flourishing state that doesn't require constant human interference, and place the needs of people, animals, and the land before monetary interests. Hashtag extreme. Although we've heard nothing from our official animal welfare spokesperson, Mika Faitidi, the Greens animal welfare spokesperson has shown far more enthusiasm in her role. Animal ally, Chloe Swarbrick, sent a written question to Mecca Faitidi asking, does the ministry have plans to increase the number of animal welfare inspectors working full-time across the country? Mecca replied saying, I am advised that the Ministry for Primary Industries routinely reviews ways to work more efficiently and effectively, including the delivery of animal welfare compliance activity. Oh, fuck, this is a boring quote. The ministry is currently considering the number of animal welfare inspectors it employs and the impact increasing the number of animal welfare compliance officers will have. In a Facebook post, Chloe pointed out that there are fewer than 20 animal welfare inspectors across the entire country charged with protecting millions of animals and said an increase would undoubtedly have an impact. We're happy to see at least one politician bringing animals to the conversation. 
We've sent a question to Mecca Fight City, asking her what she's done in her role as animal welfare spokesperson. Poor Justice have launched a petition asking for government funding for animal sanctuaries. They say these shelters are in desperate need of financial support to feed, shelter, rehabilitate, and provide medical care to unloved, abandoned, or abused animals so they can have a second chance at life. We fully support the call for the government to fund animal shelters. We just wish Poor Justice didn't use this whole you'd rather give money to the mongrel mob narrative. The first paragraph complained about the three million that went towards a drug rehabilitation program done in partnership with the mongrel mob. The $785 million spent on the cycle in Walkway Bridge in Tamaki Makoto and the $27 million spent on killing wallabies. The petition then says none of these have received wide public support, yet money is being paid towards these causes. What about the abandoned and unloved animals of New Zealand? While we're definitely against killing wallabies, a drug rehabilitation program that works with the most vulnerable groups in our society is a step in the right direction in our books. Out of the billions of government spending, the mongrel mob partnership was specifically highlighted by the likes of ACT and National in order to score political points. It was chosen because it taps into people's conscious and unconscious racism, and our movement should steer away from contributing to these narratives. We'll leave a link to their petition down below. A memo released under the Official Information Act shows the transport agency blocked potential bat roosts with building foam, even though they've repeatedly stated otherwise. These bats, or pekka pekka, are Aotearoa's only native mammals and are critically endangered. The project, which aims to build a bypass on State Highway 3 in Taranaki, has yet to be given resource consent. It's said that it will provide safety improvements and save motorists four to six minutes of driving time. In August, the agency said they'd found no bats or bat roosts and no sites suitable for bats were filled in. It's now become clear that, in fact, action was taken months ago to block off what they say are potential bat roosts in a number of ways, including building foam. Marie Gibbs from the Potama Charitable Trust said it was disappointing that the agency was saying one thing and doing another, adding that it's concerning that they've actually gone into the Ngahere and blocked up those bat holes right before winter. Emily Bailey, a spokesperson for Whenua Warriors, said up until last week they were still saying they might do it in the future, and then this memo says they've actually done it months ago. So how are we meant to believe anything they're saying? The conservation group had organised a 20,000 signature petition asking the transport minister to scrap the project. The agency said their previous statements could have been worded better, and DOC stood by their fellow government organisation, saying they were comfortable with measures the transport agency was taking to avoid disturbing bats. However, Emily Bailey said it was not in the bats' best interest, explaining that the agency is reducing the likelihood of bats being in the area in order to increase their chances of getting resource consent. In a time when we should be working hard to preserve our remaining habitats, government agencies continue to prioritise development over our precious ecosystems. For our final story, some positive news as the European Parliament passed a non-binding resolution calling for an end to scientific research on animals in the EU. The EU legislators said medium to long-term funds should be made available to support the transition to alternative methods of testing. The Humane Society said the resolution was a historic opportunity to take animal suffering out of the equation and to shift the focus to modern, cutting-edge, human-relevant research. If implemented, the EU Commission could prevent 8 million-plus animals a year from being used within the 27 EU countries for research and science. The way I see it, I'm doing my job. If just one human can have the illusion of a safer lipstick or deodorant or... Uh... Hey, Ralphie! Psst. Ralphie! What's with the camera crew, bro? Ah, oh, um, <laughs> they're just following me around, making a documentary or something. <gasps> Can you ask them to get us out of here? Yeah, yeah, what, what, what will we see? Come on, Ralphie, just I'm ask really them to get scared. us out of here. I'm I don't want to die, man! <laughs> okay, Ralphie! Oh, okay, I hear you. You can, uh, you can edit that out, right? In Aotearoa, NZAVS have an ongoing petition which makes similar demands. The executive director of NZAVS, Tara Jackson, said the New Zealand government should be looking at what's happening in the EU as a wake-up call. As a minimum, our government should have a plan for how we're going to phase out animal experimentation. 
The petition sets out a well thought out plan for a legal and financial framework to enable this shift. If you haven't already, please sign the petition and urge our representatives to follow the European Union's lead. We'll leave a link down in the description below. Chair, that's all the news for now. Thanks for watching and listening. Make sure you sign those petitions and we'll see you in the next episode. Matewa. Okay.